Now, I don't think there are many people that have an issue with the result of the Wardley Clark fight being a draw. Most people seem to think that's fair. But for those who do have an issue with it, I would encourage them to look at the CompuBox numbers. Now, obviously, fights are not scored based on CompuBox because CompuBox cannot show you the quality of the punches landed. See, in professional boxing, it's not just about landing punches. It's about landing clean, effective punches. That's what judges look for. But what CompuBox can do is give you a general feel, a general idea of how a fight went. And in this instance, Fraser Clark landed 157 punches overall, and Fabio Wardley landed 151. Of course, these are divided up over 12 rounds, and fights are scored round by round. So the person with the highest punch total overall didn't necessarily win all the rounds and didn't necessarily have a higher punch total in most of the rounds. It all depends on how that punch total is divided up over the 12. In some instances, a guy might throw virtually no punches for six rounds, but in the second half of the fight, throws twice as many as his opponent and therefore gets a draw, but actually throws less punches in the fight overall than his opponent. It all depends on how the punch totals are divided over the course of 12 rounds. But anyway, Clark landed 157 punches overall to 151 for Wardley. And Clark also landed at a higher percentage than Fabio Wardley. He was more accurate. A lot of people were wondering if Fraser Clark's amateur pedigree would show up in the Fabio Wardley fight. And I think it's safe to say now that it did. You could see that his technique was more polished than more refined. And it's also reflected in the CompuBox numbers with the fact that he was more accurate. His boxing moves in there were a bit more cultured. You know, the way he would set up the uppercut and all that kind of thing. Fabio Wardley's moves looked a bit more deliberate, a bit more telegraphed. His success came from imposing his will on Fraser Clark in a very raw, crude kind of way. But as I said in the Pulse Fight video, Fabio Wardley definitely definitely has the advantage in athleticism over Fraser Clark. And that showed in the fight because Fabio Wardley has gears that Fraser Clark doesn't have. He can raise the tempo of a fight very suddenly and to a quite extreme extent, whereas Fraser Clark can't really do that. He's more one paced. So again, it was a great fight between the two. I have no issue with the draw. Could have gone either way. I think a draw is fair, all things considered. The two guys are obviously very evenly matched. So anyway, have a look at the punch stats for yourselves. Those of you who are upset with the decision, with the result, I can't imagine there are too many of you. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think. And before I go, some of you have been asking for my post-fight thoughts on Vidal Riley versus Mikhail Lawal, Chris Congo versus Florian Marku, Eris Landilara versus Michael Zarafa, and so on. I actually uploaded all of that to my Patreon page a couple of days ago. So if you want to access it, as well as all of my other extra boxing content, download the Patreon app from the Play Store or the App Store, head on over to my page, which is called The Brotherhood of Reason, and select the boxing tier. There's no contract, no commitment. You can cancel at any time, just like Netflix, but it's a whole lot cheaper. So yeah, check out my Patreon page for my extra boxing content. We've also got a members chat and what have you. And of course, my non-boxing content is also available on there on a different tier if you're interested in that. All the relevant links are in the description box below.